Okay, I got my carpet pulled back and you can see how clean it is back here. It actually kind of hurts to cut this panel out, but the reason I want to do this is a couple of reasons. Number one, um, I need to, I need to, I'm pretty sure I'm going to change my fuel pump. I think I'm going to go with the Racetronics unit, like a Walburl 255. Um, the other reason I want to do this is um, people, a lot of people like pulling the gas tank through the bottom and all that. They, uh, I don't know if it's just a sense of accomplishment to do it that way. I don't like doing it that way. That's a pain in the butt. These cars are hard enough to get under. Um, I, I feel like this really isn't hacking on the car too bad. I mean, there's plenty of holes throughout this car that uh, serve no purpose whatsoever. And this one is, is one that serves a major purpose. I mean, I, I just can't imagine why you wouldn't want to just fold your seat forward, pull this carpet up, open up this panel and change your fuel pump. Now, a lot of people don't have to change your fuel pump that often, and that's fine. But the one time that this happens and I can just go to, you know, um, Advanced Auto or AutoZone or something and get a stocker just to get me back on the road or get me home, that's worth it to me. Um, plenty of factory cars come with it, so I'm not, not concerned. Uh, the other thing is I have a Racetronics uh, hot wire harness to put in here. And dropping the tank just to do that was also kind of, seemed like a, a just a lot of work for nothing, so... Uh, I'm going to cut this panel out. I made the panel a little bit bigger, but I'm trying to use this nibbler and uh, it's my first time using a nibbler and I kind of went off off track already. Um, also, this nibbler keeps jamming up on me, so just to give you an idea of how, what kind of uh, how hectic this thing is to use. And I don't know what's going to happen here. I, I might have to end up getting my cutoff wheel anyway. This is what it sounds like and looks like. So um, I am looking in there and I can see that uh, I'm in a pretty good spot. I can see the ring is right about here. I can see a plug right there too. It's really, really close. So if I used my cutoff wheel, I'd have to be careful there. Um, so anyway, that's kind of what, that's actually not a bad line. I guess once you get it going, it works better. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm doing for a patch panel yet. Obviously I'm not going to use this piece because I'm cutting way in and I'm going to trim out. Probably get a piece of... Uh, I don't know, just galvanize steel and put a couple ribs in it maybe and then figure out how to seal it back up. I'm just going to seal it um, either with some like actual like a sealing strip or I'll probably end up just using RTV. I don't expect to get back in here again, so anytime soon. So anyway, that's what I'm doing now. Uh, I will maybe start the video up in a couple minutes once I get the hang of this thing. I just wanted you to see that uh, what I was doing and that I don't know how to use that tool. <laughs> so... Be back in a little while, maybe. Well, it actually, uh, I got the hang of it after about an inch or two of goofing around. And uh, it made a pretty nice, pretty nice cut. The, you can see where I started. That, what a mess that is. I tried to come back over and fix that up, but I tell you what, that thing works really good. It, 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 uh, it made, you know, reasonably clean cuts. I don't feel like I'm going to get cut right away. And, um, yeah, it seemed, the only problem is, is, um, hindsight next time I'm literally going to tape the car off like I'm painting because uh, the little shards that it gives off here, here's one that I didn't get with the vacuum I don't know if you can see it but this little eyelash shard is what it puts off and man those things went everywhere holy crap they're I had towels laying down thinking oh, that'll, that'll be good no no that wasn't enough at all so here's the fuel pump access um, looking at it it looks like I might have to come in here a little bit more but I'm gonna see what happens once I get the um, I'm gonna try to pull the pump out right now just to see uh, what it looks like in there and just to see if my hole works uh, once I figure that out I can then go uh, start figuring out how I'm gonna fix the hole up um, so I think there's two plugs here and and one of these is the one that interfaces the uh, with the um, uh, hot wire kit and I, I might do a little video showing how that goes together I see I missed some of those things down in there too those little suckers 
And I'll tell you what, this, there is a line here that is so close. I'm glad I didn't use a cutoff wheel. This line, that's right up against the floor. So I'm kind of glad I didn't use my cutoff wheel. I'm also glad I stopped where I did. So we're going to try to get these fuel lines off here. I'm going to vacuum a little more because there's lots of crap and maybe do a little wiping. And then I have some brass punches that I can use to uh, pop this off. I think, I don't know if I need my fuel tool for these. Oh, I guess not. I don't know if there's any gas going to come out or not. So let me go get a rag and then I will maybe start videoing again. So now that we've got the fuel pump access cut out, we can um, check out what it takes to get the fuel pump out. Now what I did in the mean <clears throat> since the last video is I went ahead and ran the hot wire harness from Racetronics and you can see it right here if I unplug this if I unplug this connector here. This connector is actually the hot wire harness. Um, when the fuel pump is energized, when the fuel pump circuit's energized, this heavier gauge wire is actually bringing electricity straight from my the back of my alternator straight to the fuel pump um, instead of going through the thinner wire, the thinner stock wire. So you can see how that all interfaces here. It, uh, the stock wiring plugs into this harness, which goes back down through the hot wire harness and you know triggers the relay and blah, 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 something like that. So that's pretty much what it looks like. It's a really nice harness, went in, no problems. Um, so for now, we're just gonna try to stuff it um, out of the way so I can lift this fuel pump out. Not a whole lot of room between the sheet metal and the top of the tank but there's enough um, the only thing i didn't do was figure out what i'm going to use to cover the fuel pump hole while i'm working on this uh, i might just i might just put a little tape i wanted to try to find a a tub that fit down actually let me go see if i can still find a tub to fit there all right no, we're gonna go full ghetto and just put a lid over top of it, throw a couple pieces of tape on it. Um, okay, so I already knocked this ring loose. Anybody that's taken one of these rings off will probably tell you that these things are a bear, man. I, I, I've, done, I've done them before where a few little taps with a, a drift, a brass drift and a hammer and it comes right off and no problem. This thing, these little humps that lock into the tabs were a pain. I ended up using this long metal, another piece of shelving, because I have tons of this laying around, in order to give me a good angle of attack to hit on these uh, tabs. And, and then once I once I grew some guts and did cut, give it a couple good whacks, it did you know move on me. But it took it took some effort. So anyway, um, we can go ahead and release the fuel lines. I have a rag ready, even though there shouldn't be much in the way of fuel going on um i do notice i did know that i'm gonna have to probably kind of do a combination of moving the tank or moving the sender out and getting these lines on and off just because i don't want to make my hole the size of a football field so we can got those loose and i got my ring loose which i don't think i can take off either until i'm lifting up so we'll pop this hose. Okay, so right now we've got the hoses are all loose. I think. There we go. And the, the one of the other nice things about these plastic, I, I don't even know if I mentioned this. This is actually a 2002 tank. I, I guess it's probably pretty obvious now that you're looking at this, but. Um, the other nice thing about these plastic tanks is there's no baffles. All right, little interruption from my dad there. You can hear his diesel Pontiac Bonneville running in the background probably. <laughs> um, okay, so we're lifting this out now. Like I was saying, you can't really pull these off all the way. There's just not, there's just not 
there you know there's not much play there so what I, I think you just gotta just do that just kind of work them off and turn this a little bit as it's as you're going then they'll just slide right off so they're off of there and now I can probably if I want slip this ring off possibly it's not really a big deal that could probably come off after it's out but try not to goof up now I I had this out already just to make sure my access worked and I noticed that actually getting the bucket out of this opening <laughs> is kind of a pain in the butt. You gotta kind of get get it on one side, and I don't know if this is just my car, or, here we go, that was a little easier than the last time. <clears throat> so now we've got it up, we can just kind of, I'm not sure how much gas is in here. I feel like there's a lot of gas in here. But, um, okay, here comes the sending unit. There's the sock, there's the float. And I'm going to go ahead and just get it out of here. Before it spills too much gas. Um, so now that we have that out, let's see. Take the seal, put it somewhere safe. And we'll uh, very carefully wipe around the edge of this. Kind of wipe away from the hole. And I'm going to go ahead and pop this on there. This is just to, just to kind of keep anything from really falling down in there. Actually, it doesn't even need tape. It's pretty good that way. Try to keep some fumes out. I'm going to put a little weight on it. So that's that. That's how you get the pump out. That's, um, in my opinion, Pretty darn easy compared to dropping everything else um, and whether or not it's the right way you know that, <clears throat> that's up to you but the uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is is I'm actually gonna install my Racetronics pump that's gonna be a different video I will probably I don't know if I'll take video of me putting it back in it's kind of the reverse of that and um, I'm not sure if I'm actually gonna take video of me covering it back up. I, I might, I'm gonna try to make it all one video, but then I have to wait, you know, it's gonna be a while. So we'll, uh, we'll see what happens, but check out the next video, installing the Racetronics pump.